Yes sir. Okay. Yes sir. Yes sir. Kidney. It has to fill 
can move sluggishly on respiration. Again, they have fallen into the trap just about lumbar regions. It is not, it's a lump with the right leg posa. Right leg posa lump, there's no business to move on respiration. So movement on respiration would be a one come test. You should not do it. Clear, clear to all? But especially you should be able to do it. Now, rest I want to explain. There's no movement on, I mean, if the lump is mobile in one axis, this lump was moving at right angles to the spinal umbilical line. But it was not moving this way. And the shift test was negative. So the part of the lump was stuck. That is retroperitoneal. And part of it was moving. And which part of the sending colon has partly intra and partly retroperitoneal entity? Cecum. Mm -hmm. In fact, this itself diagnoses the lump. Cecum is partly, you see the reflection of peritoneum, mm -hmm. part of the cecum, maybe one third is retroperitoneal, the rest is intraperitoneal. So the part which is retroperitoneal would be stuck and the other one would be moving, what you call as something like a tree top mobility. You have tree stuck in the root, but the top is moving with, with the wind. So that is called tree top mobility. But it has, it is moving slightly like it is mobile horizontally. They can be the most specific about it. That is, what would be horizontal here? If you draw the abdomen, spinal like a line, and it is moving like this, it's that right angle to that spine. Why that right angle is very important? What are we looking at? We are looking at the movement of the lung. Yeah, you are right. You love it. Another common mistake. There is no shifting dullness, no fluid thrill. Come. What is absurd about it? You, you're not empty and you're not full. It's, it's a mistake. When there is fluid thrill, obviously the fluid is filling the whole, whole area. So there's no shifting of fluid, so that is important. Lymph node examination is the wrong way to put it. Abdominal examination was incomplete. <coughs> Tell me what was missing. Tanner. Okay, auscultation is missing because patient has features of obstruction. You need to look for the bowel sounds, exclude obstruction. What else is missing? Double tightening. You're answering or? DRE. If you don't mention it, you had it. And we often say, if you have not put <coughs> your finger into it, you have put your foot into it. It's an old quote. You're stuck. That doesn't mean if you can't put your finger into it, you put your foot into it. That's not the intent. But if you have not put your finger into it, you have put your foot into it. Means you're in trouble. You may miss. Why is it important? It's a, it's a colonic pathology. You need to look for, so you would say, I mean you can easily say I was not able to do it or I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it would be a little unacceptable. The patient didn't give consent or should I do it? And third one is important. Show your intent that you want to do it, especially here. But no abdominal examination is complete without examination of the rectum. 
spine and the workhouse node. What did I say? Repeat. Spine. So we did not do either of them, which makes it an incomplete examination. Should not be doing it. Now, why is DRE important? What do you want to find out on DRE? First of all, you will inspect for any fissure, hemorrhoid, and a pathology there or a polyp. If the polyp in the next term, it can lead you to thinking about a colonic malignancy. And then you would look for any growth in the rectum. Can there be a situation where there is a growth in the rectum and there is a lump in the right leg fossa? You are answering my question or are you saying something else? Right leg fossa. There is a patient with pathology in the rectum and a lump in the right leg fossa. Can you tell them to shut up? There is Crohn's disease. You said Crohn's. Irritable bowel syndrome. Pathology in the right jump and lump in the right leg person. Irritable bowel syndrome. No. Irritable bowel syndrome. Editable. Anybody? Okay. Editable. It's a very common scenario. When there is a growth in the rectum, it produces a contraction. Either sickle wall being competent. The entire wind, mucus, fecal content collects in the cecum. That's a lap length is long. Mm. The broadest surface. Got modified as Pascal's law, you know. Peace is that balloons out, so you have a lump in the right leg first, growth in the left on the left side. This is one reason why you should always put your finger into the rectum. That's one. Number two, there can be a growth in the rectum which is synchronous with a growth in the in the in the sequel. What is synchronous? Simultaneous means how? How much is the gap? They, they didn't start all of them on Sunday, you know? So, how much gap is permitted for it to be synchronous? Less than one day. Within six months, good. Give them a big round of applause. More than six months, it will be metachronous. So, I'll give you another talk. Repeat. Within six months, two primaries happening synchronous, synchronous. called synchronous malignancies. If the gap is more than six months, we got it. Metagronus. Which means that there is a new primary which has happened. It's a new growth. Six months is long enough time. That's what they say. Is that clear? <coughs> so, the second reason why DRE should be done, one I have already given you, is to look for a synchronous growth. Third reason, you can through the rectum get into the pouch of Douglas or a rectovesical pouch in male mm. or the Douglas in female. Mm -hmm. And you can find some peritoneal deposits, which are called as bloomer shells, shells. right? B-L-U-L-L-E-R, bloomer shell, S-H-E-L-L. So bloomer shell, that's the third reason. I'll ask you to repeat that here. Fourth, you can, when you bring your finger out, you can actually find out the color of the skin. Then you will know whether it is melina or there is white stool like steatonia or the color of the stool is <coughs> clear, clearly picked up. So you can know there is whether there is hematopathy or not. You can know the consistency of stool. Everything, so much of information. So DRE you will show your intent that it needs to be done. You could not do it, that's a different story. And in the lady, always, always, always do the PV examination. This is to do the same thing, looking for another lesion in the ovaries. Okay. Take it that yeah. history. Deposits in the pouch of Douglas. 
it's a window to look into the territory. So that part was not done. DRE is mandatory in this patient. You can't, you can't escape it. If you insist, and in good examinations, we provide information. DRE, these are the findings. But you have to show your intent. The exam is about checking whether you would like to do it or not. If you say, I would like to do it, how should you put it up there for? You would say, I would like to do the DRE, and I would like to do the PV. Why are you saying this? You are telling the examiner, please ask me about these two. And he doesn't ask. They are disappointed. But he has already marked you for that. If he's asking, then you can answer. Well, I will look for, repeat, all the four. War better, as I said. No, you do after six DRE now you do. You would do after six months. So that was just to tell you what is introduced. Okay, next. So we can check for the uh, The first point I didn't like very much. <laughs> Repeat on the phone loudly. So that's done. Clear? Percussion and why work called no? Don't say lymph node examination. This looks very, very shabby. If you can't examine lymph nodes of the whole body, basically you would say work out lymph nodes. No, no work out lymph nodes. What is that sign called? Work out. Draws here. And there is no work out lymph node and there is no tenderness or abnormality in the spine. That completes it. All other systems, normal on examination. That's fine. This was all right. Here we didn't have a problem. And uh, you can, Damyanti, 69 year lady, known case of diabetes, previously treated for tuberculosis, very nicely put. Don't have to say presented the lump. Yes, she has lump in the right leg for some distension and recurrent constipation. Now the constipation here becomes recurrent. There is said no history of any intermittent or something constipation. You remember or you don't? You mentioned there is recurrent constipation. Oh, I'm sorry, then you were right actually. You said, I mean, what I read was no history of recurrent constipation. Of blood. Okay. No change. They've been having constipation off and on. Mm. What do they have in between? That is where diarrhea is. So you find out. Be careful because some of these patients are not such clever historians. They won't tell you a very good history. Now, there is a painless lump with well defined margins, mobile in all directions. There is only one axis. Horizontal, vertical. It is only at right angles to the attachment. It is a lump which is restricted in its mobility. It is an intra abdominal lump but partly retroperitoneal on account of no movement on shift test. Mm. And I've already committed to an organ. Possibilities are, malignancy here would mean carcinoma involving the cecum, cecum. or sending colon or highly secret tuberculosis. That's it. 